Hello gamers, my name is KK and today we are completing the moon landing on champs. The clean, easy strategy for the new players who just wanna win and don't think much. This is the great opportunity for you to try out the new strategy which will work on this map 100% of times. Let's roll the intro. This is the series called Guides for Noobs, where KK explains each aspect of Chimps, Half Cash, or any other hard game mode and makes it easy. Okay, so we begin with the triple dart start. As always, almost always. Uh, when we can, we usually try to go for the submarine and darts, but Overall, triple dart start is the go-to, the meta, the one that is the best. So, copy the spots. It's pretty important for you to replicate my spots, almost all of them. So, I placed the three dart monkeys, one near the first entrance, so right in the beginning of the track, and the other two at the exit of the first from the first crater. Okay, next one is the sniper. Sniper is going to be put on strong. It's important, and sniper try to put him as close to the uh, track as possible, in the same spot as I did. Because ideally you want to have the sniper in range of your camo village later on in the game. It's not essential, but it's just a good tip. On round 12 we place the striker Jones. Also, do the same spots and you will not miss. If you will try to experiment with spots, uh, you might do something wrong. Uh, I'm gonna explain what depends on what, but still, uh, not necessarily the, the thing you want to do. Okay, uh, Jones sniper is upgraded to 1-0-0 in order to pop the lead balloons. And now we place the Wheezy Boy. Wizard is gonna be 2-0-2. Why don't we upgrade the Arcane Mastery? Simple, because we need to destroy the camo balloon on round 24. Don't be afraid if the balloon goes past the wizard because in the spot where I placed the wizard, he is capable of popping the balloon uh, in the second crater as well. Boom, as you can see, that's exactly what happened. Also, the good tip for you is why are we first, why are we playing with Jones? Striker Jones overall is pretty bad hero, but he is exceptional with the mortars and cannons. With these two towers, he is very strong because he buffs the hell out of those two towers. And today we are playing with the Mortar strategy. I would say it's the hybrid um, Mortar Wizard strategy, but still uh, it's a pretty convincing strategy that wins you a lot of the maps, especially with the layers that we see in on this map, with the circling um, balloon path pattern. It is pretty important. You're not gonna use the mortar strategies on the maps that don't have any curves, it's just not reliable. But on such maps as Moon Landing, probably Encrypted, Adora's Temple, the strategy works just fine and it makes wonders for him. So next step is to upgrade the 2-0-0 village, the Wizzy Boy is 3-0-2 now, and we also upgrade the Alchemist 3-0-1 right beside the wizard. For round 40, we use Jones' ability when Moab gets in range of the wizard, wizard. And this is gonna be very simple. Boom. And also, the thing is, why are we using wizard? Why don't we go into the mortar right from the get-go? Simple. Because wizard can hit through the walls if you upgrade it in, into the top path. And we really want to have a safety net of the Wizzy Boy, which uh, has the reach to the beginning and the end of the track, in order to uh, have some stuff, uh, let's call it secured. Now we upgrade the village to 2-2-0 and we place 3-2-0 Mortar. Mortar set the targeting just in the middle of the crater. Uh, and after that we will upgrade the Mortar to the biggest, the big one, and then probably to the biggest one. But first, so Jones. Jones basically pretty much doubles the damage of the mortars and cannons when he reaches level 20. So a very good tower, very good hero for this strategy. You could also try going with Oban, because with Oban you would buff the wizard. But since I really want to show you that mortar is the viable strategy on chimps, because recently Isop and a few other YouTubers made the video on the so-called overpowered mortar strategy uh, with the tier 4 middle path. It's not overpowered, it's pretty 
niche. Uh, let's call it this way. It's good. It's good. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I wouldn't say that, that you can use it more than the big one, for example. So uh, still keep in mind. But this is the, the big one. If you want to, tell me in the comments. I can make the champ strategy with the tier 4 mortar and tier 5 mortar in the middle path because both of these are viable we can make even the strategy with tier 5 and tier 4 on the bottom path so it's it all depends on your activity on your likes commands and uh, subscription of course and also hit the bell so uh, now what we have we have the arcane spike wizard this tier 4 wizard I also added one more alchemist and at this stage we will shred through everything because mortar stuns and deals 8 damage per shot uh, to every balloon and wizard put him on strong it's pretty important wizard will shred through the blimps layers and this way we have the perfect killing machine like the carnage is happening right in front of your eyes the balloon genocide because wizard is has good peers whereas the uh, the big one has really good area damage and when we combine those two towers we have a very powerful combo as for the abilities of Jones, uh, we will not use his second ability, level 10 ability, in this run. If we were to play with the t middle path mortar, we would. But here, no. Uh, it's not important in this walkthrough. What is important is, of course, his level 3 ability. What it does. It does minuscule damage, but it is really good stunning ability. It stuns for 3 seconds. It's not that much, but it's really solid because it has small cooldown so you use it mm -hmm. use it okay so very quick cooldown and this way you are able to use it in the very specific scenarios where you feel like you are struggling round 72 we are with the biggest one the biggest one is mm, one of my favorite towers in this game because you place it first his range is ridiculous he almost hits like one third of the whole map and he has i'm pretty sure 30 damage per shot and area damage so <laughs> very powerful with the biggest one uh, you will not struggle with pretty much any blimps you need to slightly change the uh, targeting where you make him shoot because uh, I wouldn't say the center of the crater is the best just shift it slightly to the right of the first crater and he will cover even larger area now we need some more DPS against the blimps we could go straight into the for example overclocking this guy and the biggest one only but we don't really need it uh, what I would go for is of course first MAB MAB is important for the wizard to destroy the DDTs the big weakness of the strategy is the not the this strategy but the mortar strategies in general is the DDTs uh, DDTs are the enemy of the mortars because without the MAB village mortars can barely even scratch them because uh, the DDTs are immune to the explosions. So if MAB allows your any tower to pop any balloon type, but just for the reference, uh, mortars cannot damage the DDTs except the third path. The biggest one can't. Now what we do? I place the MAB and I also place the Al not the alchemist, the overclock engineer 040 in the um, beginning of the track. It do doesn't really matter where you place him. Uh, main thing is not to place him in range of the alchemists because he will steal the buff and this tower is pretty weak. And at this stage, oh, love it! So it's just shredding through freaking everything. <laughs> Mortar goes brrr, brrr. Look at this, look. You use level 3 ability when you see the balloons stockpiling in one of the craters. So ideally you don't, you never wanna have the balloons go past the first crater. And in order to achieve this, you just use Jones's ability. And it recovers pretty much uh, during each round. 
before round 80, what do we do? We afford the knight story. We are almost afford the Archmage. But, uh, funny thing, with the overclock, the biggest one is capable of popping the DDDs. So, technically, we could go for the double overclock and for the sabotage in order to destroy everything with the biggest one. He definitely has the capacity for this. But, uh, if you want to play safe, don't just make the rush decisions, just overclock the biggest one. And why do I even afford it the sabotage supply line? Uh, we need it for the DDDs. DDDs are, even though they kind of seem very easy to, to deal with right now, but the only reason they are easy to deal with is because we overprepared and we know their weaknesses. Uh, if you are a new player, I am confident that you struggle with the DDTs. What we did for the DDTs is of course the MAB village and the wizard. Uh, awesome. Try to use the sabotage almost always for the DDT. Sabotage is the 0 for 0 uh, ninja. Uh, whenever you see the DDT, so round 90, 93, 95, 99, during these rounds, make the rule of thumb. I use sabotage. And you will feel so much better because uh, most of the towers, the tier 5 towers, are capable of popping DDTs. It's just that the DDTs are so quick that these towers need some help. Uh, on the round 99, you can see uh, it was, you could say it was slightly close, but I wouldn't say, I would say it's an exaggeration. Um, the wizard still destroyed everything pretty easily. Uh, also, you overclock the arc mage this time don't overclock the mortar and i also use the carpet of spikes ability for the bat balloon uh, bat is pretty easy uh you i have quite a lot of cash stored so i afforded two carpets of spikes uh this is one of the best ways to deal with the bat blimps so have the carpet of spikes it's pretty usable okay and at this stage, we overclock the Archmage. Do not overclock the the biggest one this time, because the biggest one has pretty bad peers. Whereas the Archmage, because of his quick attack uh, and single, uh, single target attack, he is more than capable to deal with this. And as you can see, I also used the Jones' ability to stun the Zomigats, and I used the Sabotage when I saw that the bat popped because you don't want to use sabotage supply line when you see the bad balloon uh, layer on the map, but when you see that the layer popped, you immediately use sabotage and you win. A very convincing and pretty easy victory. Uh, this map is a good opportunity for you to try for the mortar strategy for yourself. This is my favorite mortar strategy, probably, because this is the hybrid version that has barely any weaknesses. Uh, whereas the pure mortar has the weakness in form of DDT and bat. This one, nah, not really. So guys, press the like or dislike button right now, depending on what you think about this video tutorial. Comment if you have any questions, problems, but also, remember, you might miss a few things, so if you miss, rewatch it and then ask me stuff. I will reply to you. Okay, subscribe now, hit the bell, why freaking not, and see you in the next one.